Hey guys, it's Tom in from Tabletop Republic, and we are back with the penultimate video of Core 2021 previews. So uh, I did manage to record a video on June 12th, aka Day 8. Uh, it's very busy, got a load of IKEA furniture I needed to build. Um, but I thought I might as well lump it in with the weekend videos rather than recording it uh, yesterday, because there was only uh, one, two, three, four, five, six different cards previewed over the weekend. Thought I might as well just do them all in one video because it won't take that much longer. Um, so yeah, let's just get started. So this is starting off with Friday's announced cards. Uh, so first up, we have Griffin Airy. Uh, the beginning of your end step, if you gain three or more life this turn, create a two, two flying Griffin. I love it, it's a mini angelic accord. Basically in life gain decks, you're guaranteed to gain at least three life a turn uh, in any format really. So a free token every end step isn't too bad. I am happy that this is a new card. Uh, Silver Smoke. Silver's. It's Silver Smoked. It's really weird. Uh, ghoul. At the beginning of your end step, if you gain three or more life this turn, return it from the graveyard to the battlefield tapped, and for two and sacking, draw a card. Wow. I love this one as well. Uh, face to face games had three life game based cards, and this one was amazing as well. Just. Uh, gaining three life again, really easy. Uh, get it back tapped on your end step, which it that can't block next turn, so it's the only downside. But then for two mana to draw a card, and then you know do your other bits to gain life, it comes back. Awesome. And then the final one that they had was Speaker of the Heavens. Uh, so it's got Vigilance Lifelink, tap to make a 4-4 four, four Angel, but you've got to have 7 more life than your starting life total. Uh, and it can only be at sorcery speed. Um, not bad, there was a, there's a certain card where at the uh, like if you reveal it from your opening hand, you start with 26 life instead of 20 for standard games. It's Sucking Commander. Um, but yeah, it, so it's all, it could almost work with a turn 1 play with that. Or turn two play because it doesn't have haste, but yeah, tapping to get a four four angel if you're ahead in the game is okay. I don't think it should be rare. I think it's just there because it's a you're creating four four angels. If it was just a, you know a two two or a one one Pegasus or something, that'd have been good as well. But this one is the worst of the three, but it's not still not that bad. Uh, right, then we've got limited resources. They had two previews. You've got Watcher of the Spheres. Uh, flying creatures cost one less. And when a flying creature enters, this gets 1-1 one, one until the end of the turn. Uh, it's going to be highly played in drafts. Blue-white gets more flying boosts for their standard plays. Like, there are so many methods that this card can be played in. Again, just another uncommon that can be seen in quite a lot of decks, I reckon. And it works with Falcon at Adept. When it attacks, create a 1 1 flying bird. That's tapped and attacking. Uh, so it's 4 mana for a 2 3, but you get a 1 1 possibly every turn. Depends whether or not you want to attack with it. But it's. It's not bad. Like, uncommon, probably quite good rarity for it. Definitely not rare, but I think it's just above that common. Uh, then we've got uh, the next two are the non-English cards that were announced. So you've got Canopy Stalker. Uh, so it must be blocked every turn, if possible. And when it dies, you get... Is it? Yeah, when it dies, uh, you get one a gain of life for each creature death this turn. So it's sort of a martyr. Uh, is it like green doesn't really have death uh like like death life gain. It sometimes has normal sort of just life gain. But this one's quite an odd one. I could see it being played in green black decks. It's the one colour combination I can never remember. In fact, I'm pausing the video a second. Because I was looking up like I I found like a cool little poster of all the magic symbols. Golgari, that's it. 
I found the her posters of, like of all the posters, and I was like, oh man, you know, you got Rakdos, this, 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 and for some reason I couldn't remember. Uh, white, blue. Oh, and green, black. Yeah, so it'd be good in a Golgari style deck. And then you've got Demonic Embrace, uh, Enchantment Creature. Gets plus three, plus one, flying, and it's a demon. Uh, you can cast this from your graveyard for paying three life and drawing a card. Um, very good. Uh, this one is the teased one, that, similar to the one of the cycles from, I think it was Urza's Saga Block or something, where it's the Embraces. So this is uh, a new Embrace. Uh, yeah, so for three mana, getting a creature get three, one, and flying isn't too bad. The ability to uh, play it from the graveyard is very good, but there's loads of graveyard removal in the new, like in the new set. And that's sort of what we're going to aim for. Um, and then it's a demon as well. So I, this is an instant addition to the uh, demon win condex, like Liliana's demons in stand in um, EDH. But uh, I could see it being played in standard as well, getting a black flyer. Out of one of your big creatures could be good. Uh, then the one-off cards. You've got Animal Sanctuary. Uh, just colourless land. But for two mana, you can put a 1-1 one -one counter on uh, like one of those animals. Um, it's very odd art. Like I like the idea of it, but the perspective is just off a tiny bit. Like The artist revealed it themselves. And I don't know what it is, but <laughs> it's just comical. And the actual effect isn't bad. I doubt it'd see play, except to maybe, you know, dog and cat tribal. Yeah, it's odd, that one. Oh, you've got Terror of the Peaks. Now, this one. Uh, spells that uh, your opponents cast that target this cost three life. So they have to pay three life to target it. And when a creature enters the control, and enters the battlefield under your control, this card deals damage equal to that creature's power to any target. Oh my god. If you can get a deck where it's like... Uh, I mean, this with uh, Uro. If you get a green, blue, red. When Uro enters, uh, it gets sacked straight away. Cause, unless you're um, escaping it. But for 6 mana... Uh, sorry, 6 damage uh, going to any target... Yeah, so this is going to be in every single red deck coming up. And I'm happy that they're broadening things out. They're trying to give red a bit of a boost because I've seen some of the um, uh, results from the Magic Vest -like competition they're doing at the minute or whatever it is. I can't remember off the top of my head. But Temor Reclaim is the deck. And it is boring at this point. So I'm glad to see they're trying to at least do some different things. I say that and you're going to see some of the other cards they're doing for Simic later and it's... Ugh. Glorious Anthem, uh, Creatures Control, get plus one one. Not bad, not bad enchantment, uh, definitely we'll see more play in EDH than standard. Uh, but it's, it's not... I'm excited that it's here because of this card. Carvec the Spiteful, other creatures get minus zero, oh, sorry, minus one, minus one. And it's the opposite, so this one's a creature rather than enchantment. Black rather than white. I'd like, I'd love them to do more parallel cards of different colours. Uh, but yeah, I, like I think they probably created this than did the other one. But yeah, they're all right. Um, Niambi esteemed speaker. Uh, so this one, uh, Niambi lost featured in Dominaria, as one of the Tefri searching rares that you get in Planeswalker decks, I believe. Uh, when it enters, you can uh, bounce something, bounce something you control back to your hand, and if you do, you gain life. Um, yeah, it doesn't come, doesn't go back on the board, but it's got flash, so it's good protection. Um, three mana, and discarding a legendary card, draw two cards. Uh, I like it. It's got quite a good sort of unique. Um, what's the word? Niche effects. But I'm happy with this that they did. They did good on this one. It's got you know fla a flash unsummon which can be used for protection, a bit of life gain, 
and involving legendary cards. Um, yeah, brilliant. Uh, then uh, Gabby Spots had two cards, so we've got uh, Library Lostness when it attacks draw a card. Prob won't see play outside drafts. And Rousing Reed when it enters draw two, discard one, and the Enchanted Creature gets plus one, one, and flying. Um, again, you'll probably see quite a lot of um, a lot limited play in drafts, but. Not beyond that. It's good for a common though. Uh, finishing blow. Now this is a new card. I thought they already had a five mana black destroy it, but I think I was thinking of a completely different card. But five mana common to destroy a creature or planeswalker. Again, there, there are a lot better methods uh, in terms of all the rares. But for a common that you'll you'll get you'll probably get a choice of one or two in a draft game. Easy pick. You got Brash Taunter. This was loading ready runs. One, uh, so five mana, one one, but it's got indestructible. When it's dealt damage, it deals that much to an opponent, and for three mana, it fights another target creature. Very cool little goblin card there. But for, for five mana, but it's got load of good effects. There is the new card where uh, it deals 5 damage to a creature and they lose indestructible. But um, yeah, I reckon this will be used in some normal red decks as well as pretty much every Goblin Tribal. Uh, discontinuity. So this is only the fifth card to have end the turn as text. So for 6 mana, you end the turn. Or, if it's your turn, only costs 1 and a blue. Now, instant speed, you exile all spells and abilities from the stack, including this card. Play whose turn it is, discards down to the maximum hand size, damage wears off, and this turn, end of turn effects end. You do not go into your end step if you do it, so any like, people have already found amazing combos of like games where it's like, oh yeah, double, you have another combat step, but you lose at your next end step. Like, those effects don't matter. Um, people have still thought about playing Uro, getting the, getting the draw a card and gain life abilities and playing the land card and then ending the turn before he can be sacked i don't know if that actually works but oh wow i'm happy about this this is going to be so janky and i love it um and three more to go battle rattle shaman it's a reprint loss standard legal in rise of the ultras in 2010 so it's 10 years in the making battle rattle great name love it um at the beginning of your combat you may, don't know why you wouldn't, you may have a target creature get plus two plus zero until end of turn. Uh, yeah, like, it's going to be annoying on Arena. <laughs> One of the comments I saw was like, this is going to be annoying on Arena. Because you're going to have to press, yes, I would like to make one of my things stronger. Don't know why you, you wouldn't. Unless uh, you're playing like, one power tribal with Cavalcade of Calamity. But, um... Not, not bad, not quite a good reprint. I don't think it'll see much play, but uh, it's not bad. Um, then, uh, so that was River by Good Luck uh, GLHF. This was also one of the ones I had to uh, return a spell or creature to its owner's hand. Now, this is spell. So, I th I'm not sure on the ruling of this because I've never played this, never played against it. So, essentially, an unsummon. It can, it's not a counter spell because the top the spell still goes on if it's played. It can essentially you can play it on your own spells, and you can do them twice if you have the mana. So yeah, I, th I believe it's that's how it works. But yeah, it's a um, reprint from Eldritch Moon. I like this. Good choice on that one. And finally, uh, on the terms of the Friday cards, he is back. Colossal Dreadmore. Oh man, the best card in the game, 6-6 six, six Trample, the beefy boy is back. Don't know why it's a meme that people love him so much, but yeah, <laughs> he's a, you can't go wrong with a Colossal Dreadmoor. Uh, right, let's go on to June 13th, day 9. So first up, we've got Hooded Blightfang. So this is a Death Touch Tribal card, uh, so it has Death Touch when a creature with Death Touch attacks. 
uh, every opponent loses one, you gain one life, and when a creature you control with Death Touch deals damage to a Planeswalker, destroy the Planeswalker. More Planeswalker hate, love it. Hate Planeswalkers sometimes. Um, yeah, love it. Shame it's not legendary, because this is a legendary Death Touch thing. It would be amazing. I like a, for a commander. Yeah. Amazing. New, new uh, Death Touch card. Then you've got Paladin Mir, it's a reprint. First standard reprints, it's its original printing in Scars of Mirrodin. It's had like six other reprints in like Mystery Boosters and Iconic Masters. But yeah, it's a three mana, two, two with a soul ring tap. Uh, can't go wrong, it's gonna be highly used in colorless decks, especially like the Ugin based decks. But um, yeah, good choice. Don't wanna put a soul ring in the standard deck. Uh, it's just a good mana rock, really. Mana rock on legs. Then, what a reprint. Scavenging Ooze is back uh, for a single green. You exile a craft card from a graveyard, and then if it was a creature, you put a 1 1 counter on this and you gain a life. That bit's secondary. The fact that on your turn, you can just spam, remove everything from an opponent's graveyard, it counters most decks, can counter uh, cycling decks with, uh, I forget the card, the red white card that just ruin your life um uro because they can't put <laughs> they can't exile cards to get uro on the battlefield so many decks rely on graveyard and exiling stuff from the graveyard or graveyard amounts this with torment's crypt says you put four of each in there and you ruined most decks like ru ruined your opponent's fun which is amazing and then they've also got the alternate borderless art version, which looks amazing. But I prefer this one to the other one because, I mean, this one doesn't look like ooze, really. It looks like more like a flower. And then that one looks horrifying. It's brilliant. Um, and then Wizard Magic were meant to put on an Instagram, but they put just Basri. So I don't know whether they forgot to or what, but they were meant to have a reveal, but they didn't. So let's just go straight to June 14th, day 10. Yesterday, they just had three cards. You got Ixlam reprint of Kite Sail Freebooter. Uh, essentially, cost gets something until the Freebooter leaves. Not, not bad. Happy to have more pirates. So, a couple, couple of pirates so far, I think like two or three. Ratha, there's a new Ratha who was last seen in Dominaria. Uh, this was one of the teased cards. Uh, they believed it was Ratha just because it was red green. Uh, but it gets first strike you know, on your turn. You can look at the top card of your library at any point, really good, and play lands from the top of your library. Amazing and gruel. And then for six mana, gets XX, where X is the number of lands you control. A lovely land based legendary card there. Um, sorry about my phone buzzing, I forgot to unmute it. Or mute it in the first place. Yeah, I like this card. Uh, when I first saw it, I was like, it's not going to be stupidly overpowered, but it's just that. Perfect level of rare. Um, then finally, you have got the card with 31 different options because we I originally predicted it would be choose a color combination because there are five color combinations, and then you could you could either pick one of each or two and then three and then four, and you could pick all five all together. This one is because there's five options, so you can either choose just one and it's choose one or more. So yeah. You'd uh, I reckon you'd probably be playing four of the options. So you'd either be playing counter spell or counter ability. I don't think you could really do both at the same time unless they like kept the stack and played more cards and stuff like that. So you could do both, but most of the time you'll be playing four. So it'll be counter spell or ability, uh, return opponent, unsummon something. It could be uh, anything as well, not just your stuff. Create a token. Uh, it's a copy of a creature you control. Uh, can't go wrong with that. And then target player draws a card. So, um, yeah, this one is going to be for six mana. You know, it's a perfect mana amount for that, I reckon. Just too much to put four on your deck. But when this comes out on the board, your opponent will essentially double their creatures because blue techs never really have a lot. But let's say it's on a Shark Typhoon deck, you get another Flying Shark, you can bounce your opponent's 
creature away. You get to draw and you get to counter whatever they were about to play. So yeah, some lovely choices there. Uh, but yeah, that's it. So we only have one more day of previews. I'm just literally going to quickly look it up uh, of who's doing it because I know one of the final guys is uh, Telerian Community College. Uh, you got uh, Making Magic again, the Asian Avenger, Good Morning Magic, which is um, Gavin from Wizards Show, Hipsters of the Coast, Monsters of Modern. You got some big, big people uh, doing the final day of previews. Hopefully, they're going to throw in a massive curveball and bring in something amazing. But it's Wizards, they're probably blown off with <laughs> most of their steam. But with all these reprints, I wouldn't put it past them to put something amazing there. I don't know which teases we still have left but yeah we've got only got one more day to go and then a jump start will start i'm not going to do daily videos for jump start i'm just going to do one at the end with sort of my my opinion i'm going to do an opinion video on core 2021 later as well but yeah thank you guys for watching i'll be back tomorrow with the final core 2021 preview video thank you for watching i'll see you guys later